final match of the Wardy TV Spring Championship European group for week two. And here's, of course, one of our favorites in the bottom left-hand side, our blue Zerg player. It is Raynor from Clash. Up against the Red Terran in the bottom right-hand side from Team Liquid, we have Clem. Oh, and how many times have these guys played against each other? Well, if you're watching this on YouTube, you probably know for sure, because all I did last week was upload Raynor versus Clem matches. Um, this one is not a grand final. It's just a best of three as well. But hoping for some great games and so expecting maybe to have to upload this to YouTube too. So if you're watching, don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment. Thanks so much for the love lately. We're pushing that 20,000 subscriber mark. Let's keep it going. Let's get ourselves into Golden Wall here. So game one of this best of three series. Uh, we get this up and ready to go. Our final match of the night here on Twitch as well, guys. You guys have been awesome today. Thanks for all the love and thanks for tuning in. Approaching 4,000 viewers here as we get into... We, we'll break 4,000 viewers in this series, right? I mean, it's Rain or Clem. Why the hell wouldn't we? As we set this up. So, Golden Wall to start. We've actually started on Golden Wall a bunch of times in ZVTs this evening. Um, I think in pretty much every ZVT, we actually had first map Golden Wall. And everyone's playing the same way from the Terran point of view, which is you go into that gold base. So... You just expand upwards initially, and then you go across to the gold for base number three, and you just kind of stick around the top side of the map. I feel like we really, you know, gone all the days of playing that bottom side of the map, playing that bottom side, playing that attempt to push through, break through the minerals, and get something going over there. As we do see the Reaper building up from Clem about to finish, and the SCV coming across to scout. Well, we'll see what Raynor wants to do. We actually just casted a game where Raynor tried to go for a very fast lair on this map and tried to rush in towards the uh, two-base Spire. Unfortunately, then, New Thermal went for 2-1-1 one, one and had a bit of a build order win over him. But this time, Clem's not going to do that. He's going to go factory, and we'll see if Raynor wants to do that. I'd imagine perhaps not. So we shall see. By the way, I just want to say as well, we just hit 60,000 followers here on Twitch. Crazy, thank you so much. As we do see the Reaper coming through, a couple of lings taking some damage. And we're gonna have a couple of queens in the production tab as well. The lings coming forwards, and Reaper continue to kite backwards. The factory of Clem gonna be coming up in the main base, and the Reaper just kind of hanging around the front. As it hops up, a grenade drops down, pops the queen over to the side. Creep team are taking some hits there. And just gonna be seeing the command center morphing into an orbital on the natural expansion as well. So getting that up and running. The starport of Clem in the main base. We do see this Reaper just still hanging out the left-hand side. We'll see what comes off the starport. Of course, this is a typical sort of setup for Clem where he gets the CC on the low ground eventually, builds in towards a Liberator or maybe a Viking or two before he goes into the tech lab and the stim. The Liberator is definitely his most preferred choice. As by the way, this is very similar from Raynor once again to what we were talking about about Euthermal. That faster lair coming up. No third hatchery. And uh, building in towards what seems to be some fast mutalists here. So Reyno trying to go in towards fast mutalists here on Golden Wall. Maybe just likes this map for fast mutalists or something along those lines. And as we do see the Reaper and a couple of Hellions coming through. A couple of Creep Tumors picked off at the front there already. The Zerglin's being picked away at as well. And just going to be seeing the couple of units from Clem back out into the middle of the map. As a Marine comes through in an Overlord... Is going to take a lot of damage. Just going to be... Oh, so close to going down. It does go down before it gets... I mean, it doesn't matter if it gets high ground. Right, there's a barracks here. I'm making this more exciting than it should be. Hey, look at Clem. Going to go fusion core. So he's really going to mix this up here and go battle cruiser. Does this mean he's going to play mech as well? Because that's typically what happens off the back of BCs. Yeah, it probably, uh, probably is. As we see one creep team picked off here. Good job by the Reaper. There's our Spire start, and the Bane Nest coming with us. Again, you need that Bane Nest to be safe against some of the builds that can happen in amongst all of this. That's the few Hellions down through the bottom side of the map. The Overseer coming through. The Spire dropping down from Reno in the back of the Natural. And again, 10 more Zerglings in production at the moment. Getting those up and running. As Clan pulls his Hellions back out to the center of the map. He's just having a little check to make sure that these minerals aren't mined out. There's no threat coming through the bottom side. Because, of course, it's a bit of a weird game, right? Because you, you didn't see the third hatchery. So he's like, is there roaches coming across? Is there something I need to be sure of here? Nope, it's just uh, Reynolds trying to push up and towards that spire very quickly. And look at this from Clem. BC, but also Stimpak. So he's going to go for the bio follow-up from the battlecruisers. So 
Reynolds sees pretty much all of this. The only thing he hasn't seen is the actual fusion core, I believe. Where is the fusion core? Wardy is blind. There it is. So Reynolds hasn't actually seen the fusion core, but you can make a pretty good guess. It's a BC. And then it's kind of funky, right? Like a fast spire here at the moment. It's kind of getting a little bit wild indeed. So it's going to be meters already against a BC that can go across the map. In fact, that BC is already... Okay, I actually didn't teleport. I'm just blind again. That's the second time I just thought something had happened and it hadn't. Okay, well, never mind me. Eight meters on the way up, though, as the BC is actually just going to take it easy. It's going to kill this Overseer initially. I think Clem is realizing that this could be a fast spire, and hence, going in towards the BC, not teleporting it across, knowing it will just instantly die. It's a very expensive unit to just instantly lose out on it. Would be a real shame. So, now he sees for sure that this is Mutalisk, because Raynor is a bit supply blocked. But Clem getting that final scout, finally knowing what's up. What might be nice of it is if this BC gets across the map and Reynolds not quite in position, the Mutas are across harassing, then the BC can get some good damage done, as we already have a good Marine count coming in from Clem. Missile turrets up, so what these Mutalists can get up to is going to be somewhat limited as well. As we do have our battle cruiser cross through into the main base. It's going to be seeing the Queens already dealing some damage here, so the BC taking some shots as... Trying to hunt down the Queens. Obviously, Queens have a transfusion for the moment, but then next transfuse is not available. No energy ready. Oh, needs to actually micro this BC onto the lower health Queens, though. May as well get the kills for sure, right? This Queen is probably going to pull back towards the small Corolla. BC can take the hits, though. Now can sit here and take some damage, uh, deal some damage to the drones. The Midas got pushed away pretty easily. Is this going to be three workers killed off? Uh, Hellion and Reaper still sitting on the top side as there's the BC teleporting home. And that will come back across to this natural expansion where SCVs can pull in instantly, repair on up, and get this underway. Mutalisks continuing over to the right-hand side. There's a few Marines stemming down. We've seen the Mutalisks going in towards that orbital command here. So, a couple of shots on that. The Marines coming through and the Mutalisks oh, going to take a hit. Only one of them goes down, but of course the splash doesn't help. As Clem does establish this gold base like we mentioned. Now, the mutants are generally good at coming in from this bottom side and maybe harassing this gold quite a lot as well. As Clem will continue to build up there. Man, Clem's so fast on the upgrades, by the way, but what's such a shame is that he forgot his armory, so he's going to be way ahead on this 1-1. But the mutants will probably keep him back quite a lot, and then he's not going to be as quick onto 2-2, so making a big 2-2 play is going to be pretty rough. As we do see the mutants... Back down the bottom side, another Overlord picked off. This is the second time Reynolds actually supply blocked this game from this battle cruiser dealing some damage. Hey, teleport not available just yet, so it does have to be a bit careful. Okay, it's ready now, and he actually is on a mineral line as well, so repair is available too. Clem is pushing across, still has 1-1 one, one against 0-0 zero, zero here, so it's not a terrible time for him to take some fights. As obviously the main goal of this is getting some creep tumors, but uh, well, I mean, this is working, isn't it? Mutas fly back over him as well, so Reynolds is taking some damage already. This clan will be healing up with these medivacs at the moment. So medivacs healing up these marines a little bit. Widowmine gets picked off in the front there. And again, the BC down the bottom from Clem coming across and seeing what's going on. Drill and Claws 2-2 upgrades on the engineering base. All of this coming through at the moment as Raynor will come around this top side. Middle is still flying around. I really like what Clem's doing with this main bio army. Just keeping a lot of this creep spread pinned back and able to really get on the map just yet. The rest of these Mutalists coming over, and we see one Marine already picked off. I mean, the Mutalists just looking for reinforcements in general, and maybe even a dive onto a mineral line here. Gold mineral line is not saved in time, so Clan will have to rely on the Marines that he has to defend those Mutalists, but he is across the map, and BC teleports across as well. There's not much anti-air here to really deal with the BC, of course, because you're really relying on the Mutalists, which are across the map attacking. Not even a spore crawler in this natural, so this BC continues to do crazy damage. Marines have to pull back. There is a Widow Mine active. This is now evened up upgrades as well, by the way, because I know we mentioned a lot about the 1-1 earlier. But by the way, also back on upgrades, Raynor forgot to start his 2-2. So you only just start plus 2 Carapace, so Clem will have a big 2-2 timing in this game. Of course, these upgrades, they're that far ahead, or they're meant to be that far ahead from Clem. Because of the fact that this was a 2 base Spire play, he really delayed the upgrades and other pieces to make this work out. And obviously, the meters are meant to do enough to give you an advantage to justify being behind on upgrades like that. Well, let's see if they will, as Mutalist from Raynor continuing into the center here. Picks off a Reaper. A few more Marines coming into play. Widow Mine production from Clan continuing up as the Mutalist over to this right-hand side. Trying to see where they can go. A lot more Lings of Raynor. 
moving around as well going up to the upper right going to be seeing the mutas in towards the main base and just going to be having a would don't mind to be careful of, but he snipes it down. So the harassment continues from Reno. Will not let this stop. Another would don't mind make that too. Doing a great job there. Now the Ling Bane though from Reno around this right side. Gonna go down. Gonna look to get this command center. So might be able to cancel a fourth base to Clem. He actually runs past that and just hits the mineral line. He's eager to shut down the gold base of mining, but Widow Mines defensively did a pretty decent job. The BC doesn't have teleport, so it does have to be protected by Marines. Clem is pulling back, but boy, is there barely any. Creep spread for Reno on this map, and that's crazy. The fourth base is barren of creep spread. It's not an easy base to push into his clam. Even if he just gets like a two medevac drop here, pushes in, he can pull back and fight any Banes rolling in off Creeper Maze uh, right away, which is amazing for the Terran player. That's like a dream scenario almost, as these Banes are rolling, rolling. Oh no! Oh my god, those Banes connected on a clump of SCVs long distancing uh, slash transferring bases. What a catch that is from Reynor as Clem takes 22 SCVs of losses. Those mutas are continuing to add into this as well. He's once again across the map though and picking off some of the Banes that roll in at him already. The mutas will once again take a turn away back into the center. 10 mutas lost this game. 24 SCVs and the 10 drones. Just kind of interesting in the numbers here as Clem sees a fifth base. If he can deny the fifth base while well, Reynor's obviously been denying his uh, economy a little bit, that's great. The fourth base of Reynor not mining because of the BC that went over there. Good split backwards from Clem. Here is Reynor trying to morph in a few more Banes. The rest of these Marines probably gonna have to pull back as well, taking some shots already. This Thor trying to run away down this low ground. Widow Mines all over the place does connect on a group of Banelings here in the end. Oh, but Clem gets mostly cleaned up. Now he did get the fifth base. He did deny this mining on the fourth for a while. And he's got a fourth of his own up in the meantime. Really needs the missile turrets here to help him secure the base against those middleists, which have been a major threat and a major issue so far. They have consistently been just going and going and going. Lovely that Clem was able to save this Thor, by the way. Obviously, a full repair here that can do so much so easily. Again, basically a brand new Thor in play. So that's a nice save as the middleists continue down to the bottom side. We're not going to be coming across and... Uh, just trying to get in towards the couple of widow mines there, unable to at the moment. Even more banelings of Raynor morphing into the top right hand side. Now the mutilists of Raynor dive into the main base as well. A couple of widow mines that he can come for. Oh, he's going to take a big hit, but again, that splash doesn't matter unless there's something of a follow up, which a few marines run in, forces these mutilists away, and then they mess up the micro. Didn't go far enough away, apparently, as now we see a planetary fortress under baneling fire. It's a lot of Banelands given up. Only 10 SCVs, but obviously losing the command center is the biggest issue. Clem doesn't have a new CC to replace that, so he's going to lift off his main base. Take that out to the fourth. And that means he's got no planetary fortress here. So Clem, as he starts to push again right now, needs to get something done. He's low on minerals. He hasn't even started 3-3 upgrades, which is something you usually go into right away as a Terran player. These few Lingers turn their way back up the center. Io marching across the map. SCVs already long distance in the fourth base that they're going to be having an orbital on very soon. Clem does start a new CC, and that's going to be very important because if you continue to lose bases to Banes running into it, you need the next base ready to go. It's one of the comfort zones of the Terran. Once you get up to a point where you have CCs ready to replace right away, life is just so much easier. Beautiful spread from Clem as these first few Banes on creep can't even find the Marines. Now the Bane's coming in again. Good split backwards. There's just Widow Mines everywhere. Widow Mines get a big shot on Banelings on the bottom side of this. And now there's not that many Banelings left. There's eight more Morphin from the left-hand side. Clem might be getting himself a little bit surrounded here. He can lift into Medivax and begin to unload again. At least he uh, dodges a lot of the Banelings' splash damage. The Thor's still fighting as well as the Mutas are surviving. And some Zerglings that ran into this go down also. Now Clem wanting to push up this ramp. Reinforcements still making their way across the map. Another Banelin connection. And the Medivac's now boosting away over this right side. This Bane Widow Mine. Oh my god, another Widow Mine as well. Dealing some damage. A Thor on the bottom side hitting the Mutalists. And the numbers of the Mutalists are going down so quickly. Another Widow Mine finds three Banelings. And Clem has dealt, dealt a lot of damage. In the meanwhile, that Orbital Command has come up. The problem is, if only a few lings hit that base, you don't even need to give up Banelings. Just a few Zerglings can deny all of this mining that Clem so desperately needs. He hits Widow Mines on the fifth base, gets 10 drones as well, and brings this to a 63 to 54 worker game. So he's in reaching distance of Reynolds' economy. And that's obviously very important. There's the few lings I talked about. There is the reinforcements already here. So for the moment, it denies mining for a few seconds, but not much more. But it's nice for Reno because it's very cheap to get just a few lings across. And it does, you know, it is still effective at pushing this away. 
Still no 3-3 from Clem. That upgrades advantage, which you generally end up on as the bio player. Just not coming through. As he takes those topside bases that do wonder, you obviously stop caring about the gold base as much because it's going to mine out already. And so if you take this top side base, can you just push the top side and take this base down? Can you push through this avenue on the top and really hit that fourth base as well? SCVC are going to see this uh, group of Banes readying up with some Banes as well. Oh my god, the high ground snipes. All the Banes go down, run by, shut down completely. Reynold will not do anything with that. As now more Moodleists coming into the center of the map through the bottom side across towards the main base. A few extra balance of Reynold will be morphing in as we see Amidas diving in towards the main. Missile turret is just not able to get the Mutalisks here. The rest of the links from Reynold in the upper right hand side and the starport taking a bit of damage. A couple of changelings picked off here already as well. I'm just going to be seeing more Zerglings of Reynold running through. Widow Mines. Oh my god, clean up both of them. The two Widow Mines defensively actually had so much to this. I'm taking it easy for a little while now. Starts the plus three attack upgrade. So making progress there. Well, as Reno, I mean, still stuck on Ling Bermuda. So Clem taking it easy. Reno's not taking advantage of that and throwing down an infestation pit and made his way towards Hive. Clem's actually still just up against the same comp. But generally, this is much better for Clem now to fight against Ling Bermuda in higher numbers. Um... Because, again, those Mutas aren't really meant to be part of the larger army fight. So if you can't force the Terran player to turn around as easily... And you can't run by in much, then the Terran's going to take large fights and have a great time. But of course, the Muse can still counter, so can some of the Ling Bane. I'm just surprised we don't see the Infestation bit in the tech up, especially now Clem has sat back for a few moments. Especially to make sure he can stabilize. I guess that's the main reason I didn't really pick up on as these Banes crash in. The main reason is just to make sure he can stabilize this base up here, right? Make sure that base comes up and he has consistent mining for the rest of this. As we do see a few Marines abandoned up here. They're going to get cleaned out as this attack on the gold base didn't do much. And of course, the gold is very nearly mined out. We're talking about six, nine hundred, about eleven hundred, twelve hundred minerals here. Marines continue to pull back against the Ling Bane. Muta's coming through as well. Widow Mine gets picked off. The Liberator and the Marines turning back around. More of these Banes being picked away at. More Ling Bane of Raynor coming up to the top side. The Bio... Having to split away, Banes continue to roll into these Marauders. More Marines being picked off as well. And more of these Banelings also going down, so doing a good job of this. I was just going to see more Marines into the center. Zerglings pulling away over the left-hand side. Another command center on the top of this. 22 more Banes, 18 more Zerglings coming through. This turret will be picked off as a missile, uh, mule. SCV goes down. These Marines coming down the bottom side. And again, a little bit more of this uh, Bioforce coming across the left. Picking up a few creep teamers already. More Lings and Banes still coming into play. 140 to 110 army supply. Circles of Rain are going to go running in towards that uh, right-hand side base. Widowmine hits... A ton of Zerglings here. Of course, no planetary forest, so so many SCVs go down so quickly. Even though these Lings are missing Adrenaline, they're only plus two. They're still monsters. I'm finding a few drones in amongst all of this as Widow Mine's going off. I do like the introduction of some Liberators. Really help against that Mutalus Cloud. Can go a long way here as Clem has to evacuate this space right now. He actually had this space going to the top right, but he's going to pull it back for whatever reason. Probably he can just retake this space now, I suppose. Yeah, I think actually he just misclicked and he rallied the SCVs back here with the CC. So the CC will try and relocate at the top right once again. Like I said, I like the Liberators, but there's not that many of them. So it's not like a major threat to the Mutas. The Thor in the background is definitely an issue. As these Libs get sieged up and Balin's going to get pushed away over to the left-hand side. Mutalists continue to go through over to the right. He's just going to see a couple of Banes being picked away at. Liberators firing. Hatchery taking some damage. Let me just fly all the way up, and we're going to see... Oh, Widow Mines onto these Mutalisks. Eight SCVs going down. The Mutas continuing up to the top corner. Well, Clem's economy definitely hurt, and only 38 workers left in the game. His army, though, 156 supply to 91. 3-3 three, three against 2-2. Two, two. Bio, Thor, Lib against Ling Bay Muta. Obviously, some mines mixed in there as well. Game one of this best of three. Turning out to be quite the matchup here on Golden Wall. As we see, the Mutas are going to try and attack once more. Marines are going to run into them, though. And one Muta goes down before Raynor can turn them around. Still got creep being cleaned out in the center. The Ling Bane down the left side. 
I'm just gonna see the rest of these middle lists pulling back away to the upper left as well. Medivax loading up. Clam gonna go boosting across. Well, this creep spread continuing to be cleaned out here as the Liberators will unsiege and pull away. Clem's gonna go maybe for more of a frontal attack. In the meanwhile, Raynor has set up the bottom side map of uh, bottom half of the map in terms of bases he can mine from. If Clem can reach down there, that's obviously going to be big. He's actually already got a drop, a big drop as well, coming down. Four medevacs of units, and Lings are just kind of running into this. No Banelings there to support it. Now he's realizing he has to slow it down. Widowmines setting up as the Marines... Oh, going to get hit massively, but the Widowmines... The Widowmines do a good job of making up for the Marines' loss to the Baneling connections. Clem also just has a huge army on the top, though, and that's Reynolds' biggest issue, that he just can't be everywhere at the same time. Because his army supply is just so small in comparison. Muda's trying to make a dive in as the Banes go diving in as well. But the Marine Marauder count is just going to be too much. Off creep these Banes. If they're going to keep going for this, it's going to be a massacre. And the Terran's going to be the one left smiling. Reynor types out game. And Clem takes the first map of this best of three. And guys, they have done it again. Reynor and Clem are giving us an amazing series. I mean, everyone knows that they were going to, but like, Again, amazing to have it happen. Game number two of what has already been an epic first half of this series. In the bottom left-hand side, our blue Terran player from Team Liquid. It is Clem. Fun game number one. Lots of back and forth bio play. And uh, really just active around the map. Taking a lot of damage, but dishing out that damage as well. Dishing out the pain to his opponent also. In the top right-hand side, our red Zerg player is Raynor from Clash. As we get ourselves ready for a game two of this best of three series. Eternal Empire has our map as well. I mean, you guys have heard me do my intro on Eternal Empire a few too many times lately, I think. Especially today. Is this like... Can, can anyone remember it differently? But I think this is like the... The every TVZ today has been Golden Wall Map 1 and Eternal Empire Map 2. Isn't that kind of crazy? So I think that's kind of wild. <laughs> kind of, uh, kind of insane, I think. As we have got our second map here then. Building up, waiting for the builds. Obviously, Reyna went for that two-base middle play in that last game and... I think, let's be realistic, it didn't really do enough. You know, it didn't really get much done at all. At the end of the day, the mutilisks obviously were useful throughout the game, right? But the the early mutilisks, I wouldn't say really achieved all that much. And I, I did like the position Clem was able to put himself into for the early stages. This SCV comes around this top side. Actually, sorry, I just want to quickly mention a, a couple of shoutouts that I forgot to do during the break. I wasn't going to do shoutouts during the game, but then I forgot to be between the games to do them. Vanilla Lover, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime sub, and also Frostaze for the 510 bits. Thank you so much. I do appreciate it. Alright, well, as this Engineering Bay drops down in the third base to try and block, this is something that Clem really likes to do, slowing down the third base on this map, and... Sometimes just forces the Zerg to take a faster uh, lair and sometimes faster Mutalus because you can't saturate uh, a third base mineral line as quickly, so you're a bit more gas heavy than mineral heavy. And you see the Reaper taking some shots from that Queen as well. The other few Zerglings coming around. Engineering Bay blocked up at pretty much full HP there, so it's going to slow this down as much as possible. And he gets the Creep Tumor. Nice kill. We had a big discussion in the Twitch chat earlier today. Someone's like, surely they never get the Creep Tumor. And I was like, no, they get the creep tumor quite a lot of the time. They're like, no, like 2% of the time. I'm like, no, you'll see it happen today. There you go. Boom, Clem gets the creep tumor kill. And then I'll just get a little bit too cocky with it, putting it down right at the front. And the Reaper braved the hits from the Queen. He'll come in, pop a, a couple of Zerglings around again, trying to buy as much time as possible, delaying this third hatchery with the investment of that engineering bay. And the end just cancels it up. Drone arrives. The third hatch of Reynor will begin as he does go overload speed already. Again, you hit the saturation on these bases a little bit faster, so you may as well stay on gas a little while longer anyways. Get that overload speed started. And a little bit of a look to see what Clem is doing as a follow-up here so that you don't get caught off guard by anything in particular. But it is just very standard for Clem, at least. I mean, in general, it's a very standard build. The Hellion Liberator into the Stim Pack. And again, for, especially for Clem, I think it's probably one of his favorite TVZ builds, especially for building up the bio, etc. So... That's where we're going. 
queen able to hit the heli in a little bit and just going to be seeing the hatchery dropping down obviously pretty late here compared to where you'd like to have it still not as late as it was in game number one though and that was by choice of rain or as we do see the stim pack on the way in the main the overlord gets the full scout of this so again clem is figured out rain sees a bit of what's going on the fact that starport is building off of no add-on and is still building at this stage probably means the liberator because it has a longer build time than a medivac and a viking um, unless you've missed the medivac slash viking move now and there's a second starport unit building which is pretty uncommon so i think it's a fairly good assumption you can make that this is likely a liberator As the italians coming through obviously third hatch just now finishing getting some damage on the queens definitely helps right i mean anything you can do in terms of damaging queens etc Brings them that much lower, harder to defend a Liberator with. If you mess up once, then the Queen could get one shot instead of three shots. That's two drones as well, so still find some damage here. The Reaper's still alive and dropping some grenades to help out. And we do see the Spores setting up. And you can see the Spores really are positioned to deal with Liberator positioning, right? So he, like I said, he has a good idea of what this is. Fortunately, the Spores not ready yet, so the drones in the main base already going to be dropping down. And Clem able to get a lot of damage done there as the Hellions come through the queen gets popped in the sky as well still more of this army from clem out up into the center and just going to see the lings oh, might be able to get these hellions now the hellions kind of went a bit too far and their only their best option was to kind of commit through into the zerg base just to try and kite and to make the most out of this but this is a cleanup at the same time it's a cleanup that comes after killing nine drones so i'm not sure you're really too upset as clem You've killed a lot of drones. I, I mean, for Reynolds, it's not great and it's not bad. It's not great and it's not awful, right? Like, you know, losing nine drones sucks, but hey, at least you got the Hellions. And Clem's point of view is, well, shit, I lost the Hellions, but hey, at least I've killed nine drones, even if it was, you know, mostly through the Liberator. So it's that kind of combination of, uh, you know, success, you know, that kind of combination of success and failure that kind of evens out the game, I suppose, going into the next little stage of this. Uh, Reynold obviously lost a lot of his Zerglings to that uh, Hellion attack as well, which means that he doesn't have a ton of Lings to try and deny a third base with. And he has a few now, the Marines on the natural. Once this gets walled off, he can move a bit more towards the third in general as this uh, CV goes down. That is one uh, a nice catch so far. Pass the Lings back out into the center. That's the Balin that's going to be finishing from Reno on the third base and just going to be seeing this hatchery about... Halfway done on the fourth already. So Reno already saying, yep, just going to expand, get this ready to go. Two medivacs of marines going to come up this left-hand side. These marines still trying to figure out where they can go to as they're going to lift back up into the medivacs after the lingers try and threaten this around. Oh no, upgrades about to finish from Clem. This game, Reno had upgrades a little bit faster than Clem did. Combat shield's now finishing. These Marines. Clem, why? What is the necessity of killing the Karak? Why would you do this? Clem, why? Clem's just got a thing about the little critters on this map. He hates them. He targets them down all the time. Little monster that he is. All right, well, Bane and Speed coming up. And the Hydralisk then going to be the choice this time from Reno. So he's going to play the Hydralisk. Lingbane Hydra is a style. I always find Lingbane Hydra interesting on this map. Because in theory, I'm like, well, it's an open fourth base for you to attack into, etc. It's, it's pretty nice. And then I'm also like, well, you can jump between bases so easily with Middalisks. And the Hydras, typically, you don't really go Ultras after Hydras. And this is not a bad map to go Ultras on. Because again, it's large. The mobility of those Ultras goes a long way. And I'm also thinking, like, sometimes these siege tank pushes when you play against Hydras come up this position, and you can just get set up onto, you know, if a Terran sets up, like, around here, like, what he's going to do with these tanks already, then it can become very difficult to kind of ever shut that down with Hydras as well, although I guess you get the faster hive because you're safer on the ground, so you can go into Vipers, etc., to help out too. I guess that's where a lot of my counter, you know, that's where you kind of get a lot of counterpoints, basically, what I'm saying right now. He's going to see the attempt of a run by is going to turn around and turn into a flank, it would seem. Coming from the bottom side of this, give these tanks a few too many locations to attack at the same time. Marines pretty spread out as well, ready for Banes running into this as we'll see Clem off creep. Should be able to trade pretty well, even the tanks to get a few more Banes. Beautiful target fire of the Banelings. Means the Marines can stay on the ground and fight the Lings for that little bit longer and get some extra kills here. As these Marines will run forward, say Queen. Ugh, very nearly goes down, not quite though. As the Marines going to load back up into the Medivacs and pull back along this left-hand side. 
Bowlings of Reno out down to the south. Infestation pit is uh, about halfway done from Reno in the main base as well. The Lings wanting to get up that ramp, but will be unable to. There's a few more Marines of Clem from the upper left coming along, and Reno is going to get pushed out all the way over to the right side. Another Widow Mine from Clem gets set up on the uh, wall off. We're just going to be seeing these Marines pushing through. A few Queens pressing forwards also. Wanting to connect into that wall off uh, here, I think. And so actually, I mean, Clem sees this. He's going to come forward. He's actually going to force the council. There's not even that many uh, units here. I guess the problem is if you try and fight it, he just pulls back in towards the widow mine. So you just it's just not worthwhile fighting it. Clem's aggressive in this game as well. Look at this planetary fortress. Left-hand side expansion. So he just wants to push and keep on pushing. As these widow mines don't have drilling claws yet, so they don't burrow up too quickly. Apparently, Clem forgot 2-2 two -two for a little while. Forgot a plus 2 armor at least when he got plus 2 attack. So it's a little bit out of sync. As we see the rest of this just coming around. Things getting a bit of a surrounded marine in the center. Picked off the Widow Mine. Picks up 15 kills. Wow, that's a big hit on a bunch of Zerglings there. Now, as Reno hits the Hive Tech, you'll be looking to obviously... A couple of real options. I think Broodlords are something you typically want to end up on when you play Hydras. You probably have to add a few Vipers along the way. Although there's no tanks and being made in this composition there's a couple from earlier still i think one or two still alive but that's about it so maybe you don't need the vipers as much as i'm kind of talking about adrenal glands are still nice because you're still playing lots of links three three is still good and like i see you can see the spire coming up probably expect the greatest by yes, these widow mines again some good connections in this series aren't they as the bailing gets picked away at and clem kind of wanting to press forwards Spire is about halfway done from Reno up in the main base. Still a bit of this Ling Bane army on the south side, six o'clock position. I'm away over to this right hand side. More Lings through the center and just going to be seeing these Marines pressing through as well. A couple of group teamers going down. Marines coming up the left and just going to be seeing the medevac loading up a couple of units on the right side as well. A few more links continuing up. The Bane's running forwards. The Hydra's pushing in as well. Widow Mine's going off. And these Marines are able to turn back around. A bunch of Bane's going down. Coming back down this ramp. More Marines being picked away at. In the end, we do see some Vipers now added in. The thing is, Vipers are good against the Medivacs as well as the Medivacs just got melted. The, mirror, uh, the Vipers are good against the Medivacs as well for Parasitic Bombers, but they're also good against Bio Blinding Cloud. And on the ground, force them to then derp and move Command forwards into Banelings oftentimes. So... There's definitely a couple of ways to look at the investment of those Vipers. Yes, that's a Widow Mine just on one circling. I go down the bottom side again. And just going to be seeing these Bane's going to connect on all those SCVs that are just transferred over here and more. We're still on the way over 11 workers. I'm somehow amazed. I, I mean, I'm, I guess it's not that crazy that it wasn't more because they obviously just stacked. And obviously, just wasn't that many stacked. But, oh, I mean, it just could have been so many. What if you transferred a whole mineral line over there? That would be like 20 workers already. Aye. Wow, that's... uh. That would have been painful as Reynolds still trying to press up this ramp. Greater Spy is now on the way in, so Clem is going to have to find a way to fight against those Broodlords at some stage here. Reynolds continue to expand out over to the far right-hand side of the map, and we do see a command center bottom side, so he's going to get to six bases of his own very soon. This base is base five, remember. That's not just base four like it usually would be. This is five base Terran already, 13 minutes in the game, and if he gets to six bases 13 minutes in this game, then he's in a really strong position to play out the later stages of this as time passes by. Bio pulling back a little bit. 3-3 upgrade still coming through on the engineering base. They've just finished up as the bio pulls back. And the Hydra's wanting to press forwards. Will not do that much. Corruptor's on the way. Of course, Broodlord's to be morphed. And this Clem actually makes a play to try and deny this hatchery, perhaps. But then he's going to get intercepted by... Oh, well, intercepted. He's going to get uh, Ling Bane running at him. He goes for a lift up. That's messy. He loses a lot of units there. As Reynolds looks as though he'll be able to keep that base alive. And keeping that base alive, very important too. You're going to basically have two dynamics on this map. There's top left versus top left and bottom right against right side. And obviously it kind of comes down to who can defend which side of their map better. They both want all of these bases. When you look at resources lost, it is favorable to Clem. So Reynolds wants to deny some of these bases while keeping bases of his own up. But as Clem wants to shut down those bases to make sure that he does mine as much as Reynolds. And so he eventually bleeds Reynolds out of this game. Of course, units like the Broodlords are meant to start evening out the resources lost as well, so it's not just Ling Bane 
kind of thrown away into bio all of the time, and that means that you can get away with being on a more even base count as Raynor. But for the moment, he definitely wants to try and stay ahead as the first ghost on the way out and advanced ballistics coming through on the natural expansion. And this game is really heating up a little bit as well. We're already 14 minutes into it. And this one really sort of shows no sign of ending, just like we had in game number one. With Broodlords out and Ghosts and Libs coming in, we might be really slowing this down to kind of, well, play, play another uh, epic kind of... Uh, you just kind of play into an even more epic scenario, right? All of these later game units, they generally play a bit slower. But at the same time, Clem's dropping all over the place and attacking and defending here and there, so it still feels very fast. As a Parasite Bomb drops onto some Medivacs, a tank abducted for us. That tank's seen some things, man. He's survived multiple fights here. Finally grabbed by those high, uh, Vipers. Maybe a Blinding Cloud here for the Banes to try and help fight. He actually tries to burrow some Banes, but the scan was already there. So Clem will scan again to make sure it hasn't happened up the ramp. Good information to be had there, of course. Just making sure he's not attacking into a position which is very bad for him. As the bio unit still coming through. A couple creep tumors going down. Ling Bane Hydra still wanting to run forwards. Three more ghosts coming up in production. And this hatchery on the right-hand side is going to go down in a few moments as well. A couple of small crawls being picked up. And there are the Broodlings dropping down from the Broodlords coming into this. As we're going to be seeing Clem pulling back a little bit. Bio still pressing forwards. On the left-hand side, Banes and Hydra are going to come running in. I'm not sure you can protect this base, which means the Ghost Academy goes down as well. At the same time, though, Ghosts are sniping down Broodlords, and this bio army is going to stim underneath them. Not enough support for the Broodlords here, so the first round of Broods are going to go down. And that is massive pickoffs for Clan because it's taken away the tier 3 tech choice of Raynor. He's now just making a massive Zerglings that's going to run into bio. Liberators will take the chance to siege up. Corruptors will want to try and pick their way through. There's the bio just on the natural expansion, pushing through. I said this game might slow down a little bit. Boy, was I wrong. Balins have made it here now. Clem will lift and escape with as much as possible. And he actually takes a massive supply lead off of this. 190 to the 160. For Clem, this was huge because he killed so many of those Zerglings. Look at that resources loss difference. Doubling from the last time I brought it up on the screen. There's some drones going down as well. All of the tier 3 tech units, the Broodlord's going down also. Massive win for Clem here on that fight up in towards the natural expansion. Three more Liberators building up. As you're going to see all of this bio coming out. We're going to see this command center of Clem lifting up, coming across this side. A couple of crawlers being picked away at. And just going to be seeing the Broodlords dropping down some Broodlings here. Ghost coming through, dropping a snipe, hits a Broodlord quite nicely. Another couple of uh, snipes trying to line up here right now and picking away at this. A couple of ghosts getting their shots off. Some Vikings coming through too. Meanwhile, Clem's actually on the upper left, a little bit of a drop here. And it's still, I actually didn't check this base, but it isn't actually there. So the idea is good though, looking to deny these bases and stop Raynor from getting extra bases up and running. He's so close to taking down this hatchery, by the way. Like. This is almost an inevitability as these Vi uh, Hydras have to run away. The ranged Liberators are just a little bit too powerful as another Bane or so going down. Yeah, the ranged Liberators make it very difficult for the Hydras to push in position. These full Medivacs are actually heading towards the main base now, so another drop across to try and get a little bit more done. Lib still firing, these Hydras all going down. Bioforce of Clem still wanting to press forwards here. There's our unload into the main base. This extractor already being picked off. Few broodlords trying to press forwards. Let's siege up again as the bio units coming in. This queen immediately in some trouble. This hatchery is going to go down, so it's a hatchery kill. This hydra's den also going to get picked off in a moment or two. So hydra den will go down as well. Three more ghost academies setting up right now. A couple extra widow mines, Viking, Marines, the ghosts, all of this in play. Did you see our Lingbane Hydra of Raynal out around the left? Another snipe lands down. A couple of creep teamers going down as well. Still the spore crawls of Raynal pressing forwards. On the bottom left, we've got a bunch of Lingbane Hydra making sure this base is not back up and running. However, now that Clem's run the, won the fight on the right side of the map, he's now taking base number six over here and base number seven in the corner. And if he holds those, this obviously is not good for Raynal. He's just sitting on five bases trying to get back to base six. The one thing for Raynor is that if he deals with these drops, there shouldn't be too much pressure from Clem to the top left without leaving these bases very open to attack. The other issue is, though, of course, Raynor's playing these Broodlords and Festers, which are very slow. So whenever he decides to attack someone, he's very committed in that position and very weak to counter attacks against him.
Alright, coming in is a oh huge fungal growth glands. That's one way to start this off. Ghost caught in the front here. Oh my god, I mean a couple of the investors going down as they dirt forwards. Parasitic bomb landed in this as well. What an opportunity for Reno, and he strikes and he grabs at it. And he takes down a lot in that fight as Corruptor's coming through, actually able to take down a couple of these low health Vikings. The parasitic bomb combo oh, oh, borrowed veins. Hitting a couple of ghosts as well. Is now still chasing this down. The widow mine will clean up. Uh, oh my god, cleans up a ghost. So many ghosts just died there from Clem. That was kind of a kind of a crazy little fight right there as Raynor might actually have a fight which actually brings him back in the game a little bit. Much needed as he tries to establish some bases on these top left sides. At the very least, he did need a few moments here where Clem was not on his front doorstep looking to bust through and break out. Because that was becoming a major issue. Is now a couple of extra broods morphing in. Lingbane Hydra on the ground. Clem just rebuilding. Well, actually, mostly ghosts. But he's actually adding some Vikings into play as well. Making sure he has something to help out against broods and corruptors. He's also even adding some Thors in. He knows they work out against brood lords. He's played some mech since those broods got improved. Oh, sorry. Since the Thors got improved. He knows. He knows. Lings, Veins, Hydras. Extra Broodlord's getting ready to go and just going to be seeing the hatchery top left now coming up as well. So it looks like Raynor will get the top half of the map. And by being over here, he might be able to deny this space. Here's my issue. So this space is already mined out heavily from Clem because he took it as his fourth base. So Clem doesn't need to necessarily do much to kind of mine this out. And even if Raynor doesn't let him mine it out, if Raynor gets this base, it's already heavily mined. Whereas if Raynor gets this base, it's not. It's very hard for Raynor to get that base because obviously he's got to focus on protecting these two bases. So this base is so difficult to take. Well, Lingbane Hydra on the far right side. A nuke lines up. I mean, starting to see nukes out before in a player. Snipe on the infest. He just lose vision. What? That was lined up, right? I have no idea. Did he cancel? I have no idea why he wouldn't go for that. Okay, maybe he didn't want to snipe. He just wanted to use this ghost for the nuke. I mean, that's seen, though. He knows where it is. Fungal growth combined. He, he missed it. Oh, my God. He missed the ghost. But at least he knows where the nuke is landing, so he can pull away against us. Some Lings and Banes run into the center. Ghost squad coming through. Cloaked up. No overseer here. Going to burrow up. A couple of these Banes wouldn't be surprised if Clem missed that. They might come into play a little bit later on, as we do see nukes continue to move around, of course. Nothing landing on any significant drone count. Raynor knew where they were. He moved the units away. Scanning the top left, scanning the center. Another nuke lining up. The sport crawlers backing off a little bit. This nuke's going to land. These liberators sieging up. And nuke goes down. Just a spore. A couple of creep tumors going down. The thing is, though, again, with Clem in the bottom right-hand side of the map, surely this is just too much for Reynold to recover from. I've got to say it. Feels kind of crazy. Another scan into the upper left. A Liberator will be sieging and drones will be getting uh, shot down as they come out of the <laughs> extractor. In the bottom right, we're just going to be seeing the uh, Lings coming through. Planetary Forest It's going to be denied. I mean, it's exactly what you kind of need as Raynor. A way to deny some of these bases a little bit. Another nuke lines up, though, and this is Reynolds' new issue. You can't just not mine from this base that you need so badly. Problem is, if he brings the Brood's Force to cancel the nuke and to kill off the ghost, there's so many more ghosts there. Nice little Burrowed Bane hit on some of the bio. His Bane's got cleaned out as well, by the way, at some stage. But yeah, you can't just bring the Brood's Force because there's so many ghosts here ready to snipe and clean out. He's just about going to reach this one. The ghost didn't come forward to take advantage of the scenario. But now he's going to get some snipes on Corruptors. And now the Broods come forward. So you can see the snipes dropping down. Parasitic Bomb lands on a Viking. He'll land a Viking to get it out. Then he lifts it back up into the remnants of the Parasitic Bomb that's still there. Still more Zerglins out through the center. Another nuke about to land. This hatchery will go down. So that much needed base is going to fall. As Raynor... Ah, there's just units here for Clem. Why is there units here? I've got no idea why he's got units over there. There's Lings and a few more Banelings setting up in the upper right-hand side. A bit of bio on the far right. Hatchery setting up. The Lings going to keep on running forwards at the moment. It's going to be seeing the extra couple of Vipers coming through. Another nuke trying to line up. This is going to be a dead ghost. 
So Ghost gets picked off over to the left hand side. Four crawlers pushing back the Liberator. Bio still pressing forward. See the hatchery cancelled. And again, Raynor just can't find enough bases. The resources lost this game 50,000 to 38,000. Yeah, this game really did slow down. I sort of talked about earlier the, the ghost and the lib slowing the game down, and in the end, we obviously got there. Just, uh. Yeah. We obviously got to that kind of slower stage of this with the broods and the infestors against this. The thing is, Reno had to know this was going to end up like this if you played a Lingbane Hydra star, because again, this is what Lingbane Hydra generally moves in towards. Interesting that he took the step away from the Lingbane meter, which he's been very reliant on when playing Clem. In, in recent times, maybe, you know, not so much today then, but I guess in game number one, but in, in the previous matches they've played over the last couple of weeks. Well, snipes come down. Bruce taking some damage. A couple more snipes lined up on a Corruptor or two. Trying to hit a uh, EMP on these uh, infestors. Doesn't hit all of them. These uh, ghosts trying to come through. Another couple of snipes lines up on, an, on a Viper. Gets that. Still liberate production coming through. It kind of feels like what's going to happen here is Clem has a massive bank. Is that he's just going to slowly chip away at this Zerg army. And he's going to see, oh my god, he's just going to go forward. So there's Ling Bane coming through. He knows the ghost is here that he has to kill. And he will kill it. Big fungal growth. And oh my god, the Baneling connections on those ghosts were insane. Huge fungal growth on it as well. My god, as Corruptors and Brutes keep on pressing forwards, the Vikings continue to pull backwards. And this is... Is this position broken? I don't even know. Clem starts up so many units in reproduction. That's probably where a lot of his supply is right now. So I think... Maybe this base goes down. I can't believe Clem has a planetary fortress on the edge of this as well, by the way. I mean, it's just so fortified. It's crazy. Issue is, Reynolds making progress here. And now he's losing stuff in the main and the natural. I mean, these are just some hatcheries and lava farms that you just don't want to lose, though. Especially the hive and the greater spire. Those are structures you really like to keep alive. And, well, four bailings on the map. What the hell is going to kill this? The Zerglin's on the way out. They're not going to do it. Uh, Clem's having a pretty good time here. Just needs to not die to these few Banes that come in. He's going to get a couple more Overlords. Greater Spy going to be targeted. Faster, I guess, and the Fungal Growth is good. And the Banes will connect. Greater Spire is saved. A must need an unnecessary play from Raynor is Clem, though. Takes the 3 o'clock position. And if you mind from this is Clem, you're just taking away economy from Raynor's kind of half of the bases. That, that Reynold needs to win this game. It's as simple as that. Well, I mean, 7,000 resources lost down. It was 12,000 before that previous fight. That's how good a fight it was for Reynor. This ghost nearly nukes itself to death. 5 HP, it survives. Lings will clean that up in a moment. Meanwhile, Clem's pushing forwards on the right-hand side. This ghost run, ghost run. Don't know why the drones are up here. Chaotic game. Everything happening so quickly for these guys. Incredible that they're able to keep on top of even the nukes so much. And there's so much around the map. I mean, Clem is really starting to make some killing moves, though. Pushing forwards here. We're going to see the ghosts coming in. Overlord's having to back away. Corruptors and the Broods as well. 11 drones actually just did go down. This nuke landing on the top left-hand side. He's going to line up another one there. As Rain was maybe kept busy out in the front. Scan sees that infester. He's a little bit afraid of it. The ghost. Oh, my God. It's behind the mineral line. He's going to go down fighting. No! This ghost has sacrificed himself for the position. He doesn't kill anything by himself in a tree. He will be known forever as Cactus Slayer. As you see, the rest of this ghost still pressing forwards, looking for snipes where they can. He gets a Corruptor trying to morph into a Broodlord. Ghosts and Vikings setting up at the front. More lings of rain onto the far left-hand side. Snipe after snipe. CC after CC back at home, by the way. Clem just maxing up on uh, command centers. Reynor has barely any money, and while Clem's income is not the fastest because he's mined out a lot of his gases, etc., this base here is really just uh, something that you just don't lose with as Clem. As I mean, I think he was in a very good position anyways. These Broodlings pressing forwards. Clem just finding a way to get on top of this Broodlord army and to clean it out. Looking to go 2-0, and zero, which would make him uh, tied at the top of the group, unbeaten still, with a laser. He was also 4-0 in the group right now. Nuke at the front is going to land. There's just too much control in the game for Clem as this ghost tries to make its way forwards in the end. He's going to give himself up and just land a snipe. Does he have a good uh, nuke left? Uh, I think he doesn't have a nuke left, which is why he's uh, 
realize that this ghost is on a mission to go nowhere, basically. I mean, even the over... There's not even really overseers on the map. There's an overseer. These these two small crawlers are the only reason there's actually not cloak ghosts running underneath this army and just killing everything. This ghost has been sniping down overseers as they morph as well. <laughs> Oh my god, a, a crazy game. I mean, in the end right now, we're, we're kind of winding down to Clem having the victory. This command center wants to land, but there's actually going to be a hatchery over here, so... Reynol. We'll, we'll, we'll take this base. And that's the thing, that even if you trade evenly as Reynol here and somehow catch up, Clem has mined half of this base, and now he's mining this base. So you just have less bases as Reno, which means you actually have to trade efficiently as Reno overall, not just evenly. And you're currently trading less efficiently. Like, what a turnaround it has to be. Clem has the, the GG army. And we're just waiting for a fight that will really close this one out here in the Wardy TV Spring Championship group stages. Week 2 of Europe. With week 3 and 4 still remaining. So we're kind of getting to... At this point, players will have played half their matches, or one more than half their matches, but... Yeah, it's uh, still a couple of weeks left to play. And lots of that can still happen as well. <laughs> oh, it's a fungal. I mean, I mean, yes, it is a fungal. Let's see, this ghost is going to continue backing off. The base on the right side does go down, so Reynold takes that down. Fast is now out of energy, though. Marine's just going to come forwards and fight with a couple of spores. Oh, so many liberators. The Banelands can't even get close. Things go kind of attacking the bottom right. Not a single one of these CCs morphed into a planetary. Clem is kind of starved for gas. In fairness, if Reno, th this is actually worthwhile mentioning maybe that if Reno was somehow able to win this out, which he will not because ghosts are coming out like crazy. Clem is actually out of gas right now. So if he was out of gas, then maybe there's a way that he can't rebuild anything. He can pick this army off, but it's just not going to happen. I think Clem can retake gases as well. It's just going to take a few moments. Uh, the, those snipes just came in, and that's what we've been waiting for on those Broodlords as the Infestors trying to come forward. Liberators have something to say about it. Vikings are going to move in as well, and Clem, right now, 31 minutes in this game, can just aim move into the Corrupted Broodlord, and Raynor will not stay to watch it happen. GG's, and Clem wins the 32 minutes. Game two, and comes out of this series as the victor here. Well, thanks for watching that, guys. That was a real epic between these two in their series.